Good morning and welcome to today's Finance Committee meeting. My name is Julissa Ferreras Copeland. I am the chair of the committee. I'd like to first acknowledge the members of the committee who have joined us. We have Council Minority Leader Mario and Council Member Kalos. I'm sure members will be coming in and out throughout the hearing. Today the committee will be, he will, uh, be hearing two bills. The, the second bill on today's agenda, introduction number 17, uh, sorry, 1176, sponsored by Council Member Ben Kalos, would mo codify the requirement that the Office of Management and Budget provide data to the Council, online to the public, in sortable, computer-readable formats. During my time as finance chair, I have made increasing budget accessibility and transparency one of my primary goals. I believe that New Yorkers should be able to access information about how the city spends their tax dollars in a clear, understandable way. An open government is a government that is more responsive and accountable to the public. I was glad that because of the Council's advocacy in the fiscal 2017's budget response, the administration has already put several budget-related items on the open data portal. This legislation is an important step in expanding the transparency of our city's budget. I want to thank Council Member Kalos for his advocacy and leadership in striving for government that is more open to all. Thank you, Chair Ferraris Copeland. I'm Ben Kalos. As always, you can tweet me at Ben Kalos. I'm looking at you, Beta NYC. Uh, it's been said that budgets are moral documents. Unfortunately, most of these moral documents are not made available to the public. New York City has thankfully been ahead of the curve in transparency, but even until last year, we did not have full transparency when it comes to our budget. I authored Introduction 1176 with Finance Chair Ferraris Copeland because we believe that every piece of our city's budget should be online in human and machine readable formats from the capital budget to Schedule C to the parts like the CAFR and appendices no one else has ever heard of. Uh, the legislation would align New York City data standards for its budget with federal standards in the Digital Accountability and Transparency Act of 2014, otherwise known as the Data Act, that led to the adoption of Extensible Business Reporting Language, XBRL, so that any software built for the federal budget could easily be used with the city's budget, like usaspending.gov. After several years of requesting these documents be made available, I was able to work with Chair Ferrer's Copeland, as well as Latanya McKenney, Dean Foulihan, and uh, others, and we were actually able to incorporate the ask into the Council's budget response while, uh, while still working on the legislation. We then worked with the Mayor's Office to coordinate the introduction of the legislation, what the Mayor's announcement to put more budget documents online, which you can now find on the open uh, uh, data portal, uh, in formats that are useful to the public and also for policymakers. We need to codify and ensure that from here on after the public knows where each and every one of their pennies is being spent. Transparency restores trust in the system and no matter what happens in Washington or Albany, New Yorkers should know they can trust their city government. Thanks again to our finance chair, former committee counsel Rebecca Chase and former governmental operations analyst James Saputi, finance unit head John Russell and uh, to our finance chair for leading us through the successful budget cycles. I look forward to today's hearing. The next panel will be Mariana Alexander from the Citizens Budget Commission and Noel Hidalgo from Beta NYC. I did. I was on the floor. Um, you make you could begin your testimony. Good morning, I'm Mariana Alexander, Research Associate at the Citizens Budget Commission, CBC. The mission of CBC is to achieve constructive change in the finances and services of New York State and New York City government. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. Introduction number 1176 would require the Office of Management and Budget to make relevant budgetary documents on one, the city's website, two, the NYC Open Data web portal, and three via an open application program interface in both human readable format and formats that permit automated processing, such as an Excel or CSV spreadsheet. In carrying out its mission, CBC depends heavily on the availability of up-to-date budgetary documents, including but not limited to the preliminary, executive, and adopted budgets and their supporting schedules, as well as the mayor's management reports. For budget watchdogs like us, the availability of data in open formats has significantly aided the speed and ease with which we can do our work. 
CBC supports the proposed legislation as it will ensure the continuing accessibility and usability of budget data, ultimately facilitating transparency and accountability in the budget process. We also offer two recommendations. The first is to add the preliminary and final mayor's management reports produced by the mayor's office of operations to the list of documents that should be made available on these platforms so as to facilitate the link between the agency performance and budgeting. Second is to require that the Office of Management and Budget make public a document that reports prior year fiscal, prior fiscal year actual spending in a similar, a format similar to the supporting schedule, providing data by agency, unit of appropriation, and budget code. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Great, thank you. My name is Noel Hidalgo. I'm the executive director of Beta NYC. And for those of you who don't know Beta NYC, we're a civic hacking organization um, who has fought for the city's open data law since uh, 2009. Our membership is over 4,000 members, and we're a volunteer-led organization that believes that technology, data, and design can be used to improve people's lives. Uh, for, many, for many years, we have been working with the city budget data and have had many, many frustrations. We're members of the Transparency Working Group and have helped improve Checkbook 2.0, uh, but still find the city's budget data to be quite frustrating. We support 1176 of 2016, um, and the reasons why is that the current data that the city shares as much as, uh, let, me, let me make sure that I got this uh, right. Um, as helpful as the new spreadsheets have been on the city's open data portal, they are still consistently frustrating to work with. Primarily, they are summary data, and it doesn't actually have the granularity that we would like to see. Um, the PDFs that have some of the details of the budget are horrendous, is the polite word to put it. Um, and um, it's very frustrating to actually look at what the city's budget looks like. Um, and so uh, most of the data that we've had access to is in summary formats, and that's actually not helpful for us to actually see what's going on within the city. Um, and so the key points of us supporting 1176 is that it increases budget transparency. Um, the big thing is that it adopts a data standard, a national data standard that helps us build applications that provide transparency at a federal level as well as a local level. Um, it, the potential to increase budget literacy with new applications that really make it simple so that way people everyday New Yorkers can have a better understanding of what's going on within their budget. Um, and then lastly, it provides a interface, a programmable interface for us to simply build new tools and applications. Um, so the only concerns that I have with 1176 um, is pretty much a concern that carries through all of the city's open data program, is making sure that when we find errors or inconsistencies, as uh, IQUANT NY has pointed out a number of times within the city's budget data, that there is an iterative feedback loop to ensure that the city's budget data gets cleaned up and uh, becomes more accurate. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony, Councilmember Kalos. We've been joined by Council Members Miller and Gibson. So first to Citizens Budget Commission, thank you for reviewing the legislation on short notice and thank you for your recommendations, uh, hereby accepted. Uh, I, I would love to, are there any other additional documents you would see, see added or appendices or uh, CAFI or other agencies that have other similar budget type documents? I would just add that it would be helpful if the appendices to the mayor's management report would be included as well. I think the mayor's management report, we have gotten those appendices up. Okay. So right. take a double check, but if anything is missing, I'm, I promise you, uh, and, and somewhere Mindy Tarlow or her successor has just shuddered, uh, but uh, that, is, that is great. Uh, and Noel, thank you for your testimony. Thank you for asking others to join you via Twitter. Uh, and so... Just a, just a preliminary question. So you mentioned IQUANT, you mentioned correction. So you're telling me residents of the city of New York actually have already been going through the existing budget documents and just in the summaries, they've found mistakes. Yes. Uh, and, and so can you tell me just a little bit about why people are, how, how this works and how they were able to find this mistake or so speak to a little bit about it? and. Uh, why it's important that we fix these mistakes? 
Sure. Um, I can't, uh, I will summarize briefly uh, um, Ben Wellington's I Quant NY posting. Um, last year's fiscal budget included a typo where the, um, uh, what is it, the, the services that provide consulary services, I believe, the NYPD's uh, kind of protection of diplomats um, in relationship to the UN um, had some numbers trans transposed. Um, and so it became the largest pool of money given to the NYPD. Uh, and it was, it, it was odd. It was, you know, it was a, as, as I recall, it was, it was a typo um, uh, and, and needed to be fixed. And so um, I believe it was fixed later on uh, because where the money was actually allocated was uh, properly moved to. Um, but it provided insight in the sense that uh, the citizens are able to, uh, well, not just citizens, but residents and you know people who come to New York were able to see exactly where the budget goes um, and make sure that there's accountability. That sounds right. Uh I guess another quick question, uh, can you speak a little bit about what you mean by granularity? Because I think some might say, well, the, it's already online on the open d data portal, and I guess for both, both you and CBC. So to the extent that, just to give a straw person argument, that it's already up on the open budget portal, why, on the open data portal, why do we need a bill to actually require more? Uh, what, what, are, what are you talking about in terms of granularity? Uh, well, so uh, my personal story is I live in North Brooklyn, um, and I live on a street where a lot of trucks come down uh, that are kind of bypassing the construction around the BQE. Um, and we've had a couple children that have been hit by vehicles. And so understanding where North Brooklyn is spending its money on crossing guards um, and um, you know, is there adequate support for all of the dangerous intersections uh, that have been identified by the Department of Transportation and, and making sure that there's money for crossing guards is an important argument or an important issue that we've debated in the North Brooklyn Facebook group. And so having the ability to see very specifically where crossing guards are allocated across the city uh, to ensure that our children can be able to go to school safely is an important issue that I've seen come up in my community and that I want to make sure that there's equity um, for all of the other communities that have to deal with dangerous intersections. So that's why I want details. I want, I want to be able to see exactly what precincts and, or what commands have this, you know, have budget allocation for crossing guards and making sure that those that have the dangerous intersections are protected. I think we find the supporting schedule to be sufficiently granular, but there's a bit of unclarity about which budget codes correspond to which policies, and that generally like, makes it difficult to understand those numbers, which gets that. And, and what you're describing is you look at the larger now online budget and perhaps an Excel sheet or something else, and then you'll say, oh, and then you'll search through a PDF that may or may not have a search function that works to then find the right page and then the right code and then try to figure out if the, figure out where the 19th precincts might be in the city of New York and then match that up to a dangerous intersection. Is that the current process? Yeah. I would okay. Say. Uh, and so I guess uh, to Beta NYC, if you go to github.com slash Ben slash legislation slash blob slash master slash open space budget. Uh, we've got a GitHub repo. We'd love to have specific language from you on granularity. Uh, and similarly to City Citizens Budget Commission, if you're able to submit uh, to this committee and, and to uh, policy of Ben Kalos, we'd be very interested in any specific language you would have. Uh, thank you. Thank you. We've been joined by Councilmember Rodriguez. Does any member have any additional questions? No? Thank you very much for coming to testify today. Um, and seeing no additional questions or anyone else coming to testify, we will now call this hearing adjourned. Thank you.